Welcome to the AP Physics Workbook Solution. Here you have Unit 2 Dynamics. The section is 2.i Stopping Distance. Here's the scenario. Consider a car of mass m moving with an additional speed v0 that is going to the right on a straight flat road. At t equals to 0, the driver fully applies the brakes to avoid colliding with the debris in the road in front of the car. The car wheel locks, causing the car to slide on the roadway until the car stops before running over the debris. The distance for the car slide is d, the coefficient of friction between the car tires and the roadway is a constant mu x. The first one, you're going to draw the representation for this in the free body diagram. There's a force of gravity going down and a force normal going up. Those two are the same in length. There is a force going backwards, which is the coefficient of friction because the motion of the car was going forward. There is no force forward because there's no acceleration forward. There is only a force back, which is the force of friction. So the first part, part B, does the value of D, which is the distance increase or decrease with an increase in initial velocity? Initial velocity is just its speed starting. So I wrote the distance in the x direction is delta x. If you use your kinematics equation, this kinematics equation gives you the distance, which is delta x, when you don't have a time value here. I could solve for the delta x, which is the distance. I could see from the equation that if I could increase the initial velocity, the distance is also going to increase. That makes sense because the more speed I have at the start, the more it's going to go further. Part two asks us what happens if I increase the coefficient of friction and explain how that will affect the distance traveled. Here, the distance is in the x direction with delta x. And I saw that the force of friction works against the forward motion of the car. When the coefficient of friction increases, the frictional for force increases as well. The more frictional force a system has the more it's going to reduce the object's forward motion because the coefficient of friction is going against the forward motion the more coefficient of friction you have the shorter distance that the car will travel let's look at some notes before we work on the next part what is friction here you could read there are two types there's the kinetic friction and Static friction. Kinetic friction is moving friction, and static friction is stationary friction. Friction is basically on the microscopic level. You could see here. You could look at the free body, by, free body diagram. Force normal and force gravity are opposite of each other. The forward motion, which is to the right, so the opposite of that is the forward of friction, which is going to go back. Notice the force of friction is down here touching the surface of the box because that's where force friction is located. I would like you to understand the static coefficient is actually a larger value of the kinetic coefficient. Here you could take a note on what is happening. When there's no motion, it is static friction. You're going to have require a large amount of force and you would have to increase this. Once you hit this peak, this is when your force applied is greater than the static coefficient force then you're going to overcome it decreasing it once it moves it starts sliding and you're going to require less force to keep it moving all right here are some notes if you need it here's the next part we are going to derive certain equations So the first part I have in the vertical direction, there are the force normal and the force gravity. Fn minus Fg is equal to Ma in the acceleration in the y direction. I notice that the system's not accelerating, so the A on the right-hand side goes to zero. Add Fg to both sides, you get Fn is equal to Fg. That means on a horizontal surface, the force normal is equal to the force gravity. That makes sense based on the diagram that we got right here. If we also look at the second part, so this is the force in the x direction. We saw that the only force in the x direction here is the force of friction. The force of friction here breaks down to mu times Fn, and it is the kinetic friction. 
because the object is moving. Here we make some substitution. Force norm is equal to force of gravity. Force gravity is equal to m times g. We saw that there are masses on both sides, so that can be canceled. We could see that the acceleration of the car is equal to the coefficient of friction times gravity. The next part is that we want to now look at the equation in terms of d. Please understand that you have to use your kinematics to solve for the distance. Here we have the kinematics equation. This is the only kinematics equation that has no time on it and there has a distance which is delta x. We know that the object's final velocity is zero. We know that the acceleration comes from the first part. Mu g is equal to a in the x direction. And we know that the distance delta x can be substituted by d. Once we make that substitution, substitution that is in the second line, then therefore we're going to start dividing. So subtract the v square naught to the other side, then divide by 2 mu g. This is the distance. A distance is equal to velocity squared naught divided by 2 mu g. Here we would see the velocities on top and we see the force of gravity is on bottom. Here we see that the car will travel depends on the starting velocity and the force of friction. So if the velocity increases, which is on top, then the car will travel a, a longer distance. D, that makes sense. That supports our first claim here in part B. That the distance will increase. So now I can put a check mark in here. We have the equation to back it up. Then what happens if we increase the static coefficient? We saw that this is on the denominator. So once we increase the co coefficient of friction, we see that distance decreases. So our explanation for here is correct. It decreases, right? So we could analyze this by saying that the distance traveled on an object, it will travel further if you have more initial velocity, and it's gonna travel less if you have more of a static coefficient. All right, there you go. Those are all your solutions for 2i. If you would like the notes, it's right here. And here's the bottom part. There you go.